Hello there, everybody. This is Mel Allen. It's the September stretch, and every pitch counts. From the west to the east, everybody's up for baseball. The Yankees climb up the down staircase. The Pirates climb up and look out. Rookies push their teams up in the standings. National League rookies pick up a big hand. And other rookies just up from the minors go to work. History headlines and highlights coming up next on This Week in Baseball. Baseball in September. Decision-making time and a wild lineup of action from all four Major League divisions. With a dozen teams still in contention, the Pittsburgh Pirates have really been swinging and showing how fast the pennant picture can change. In mid-August, the Bucks trailed Philadelphia by 11 and a half games. We're at the tip of the plank in the National League East. Then a reverse win. Two winning streaks of 10 games each. 22 out of 25, a pickup of 11 games in the standing. Mr. Willie Stargell has been here before. For the last nine years, he and the Pirates have been involved in the September battle for first place in the East, and five times the Bucks have won. Willie suffered some injuries this year, so has veteran Bill Robinson. Both chose the right time to get healthy. These veterans have had a lot to do with the pirate surge, along with a new name at third, Dale Berra, who stepped right out of the minors into the pennant race. Father Yogi Berra made a career out of late season, late inning heroics, and now Dale is trying to make it a family tradition with his own game-winning blasts. The Pittsburgh Pennant Express had worked up some head of steam, but the wheels could have frozen in place right here. And the Pirates let out a sigh of relief. The Colby is their ace reliever, figured in 13 of Pittsburgh's recent 22 victories. The eternal seeds of optimism, planted by manager Chuck Tanner, now blossom everywhere in Pittsburgh. Pitcher Bert Blylevin, known more for potential than winning seasons, is winning the big ones now, under pressure, coming of age as a standout starter. In three short weeks, the Pirates generated enough excitement to make fans everywhere in the National League East a little hoarse. During that time, Dave Parker took over the league lead in hitting. Below 300 in midsummer, Dave said, when the leaves turn brown, I'll wear the batting crown. By that time, the Pirates might also be wearing the Eastern Division crown. In the American League, the New York Yankees are now in serious pursuit of their third straight Eastern Division crown, coming from 14 games behind Boston in mid-July to only four, playing the kind of late-season baseball that won a title for New York last year.
The Yankee hot streak is happening late in the season, but one man has been scorching all summer. Ron Guidry, a pitcher completely in tune with his game. If you're in a good groove, take advantage of it and go as long as you can, you know, do anything. But uh, I've just been fortunate to, uh, you know, be pitching well. I'm, uh, the ball's been going where I want it to, and uh, it's not like you want to throw a ball inside and you throw it outside. I've, I've been getting away with a couple of pitches. It might catch up to me later on in the season, but right now everything is going my way, and uh, I'm just going to stay at, you know, in that group. Ask any batter in the league. Hitting against Guidry is anything but a groove. His fastball hums in around 95 miles per hour, and as they say, it's really alive. It's the main reason he leads the league in strikeouts, earned run average, and winning percentage. But the pitch that has made the real difference is this one, a sharp breaking slider. I've had tremendous help from uh, Sparky Lau, who uh, helped me on the slider, and uh, since he has what I consider to be one of the best ones that I've seen, uh, you know, he just uh, took time out every once in a while when I was throwing on the sidelines about breaking the ball down, how to hold it, and, uh, you know, a couple of other things. And also, I had good uh, mental help from Dick Tidrow, who, when I was going bad in spring training, you know, he, he just kept on uh, putting things in my head like, you know, a guy with a, an arm as good as mine just can't pitch this bad all the time. Somewhere along the line, it's going to average out. And uh, he was right. You know, once I got in the groove, got a lot of confidence, I began to pitch well. It seemed like nothing could shake Ron out of that groove until this moment in Baltimore. Ken Singleton loses control of the bat. Guidry is struck on the ankle. An anxious moment for the Yankees, but not for long. Without even missing a turn, Guidry was back on the mound in Yankee Stadium, making a bid to become the season's first 20-game winner, although he needed a little help. And he got it with the bases loaded from Lou Pinella. How about that? That catch saved at least three runs. And with all the luck Ron needed to go all the way for number 20. But hang on to your hat. Not only are Yankee fans cheering Guidry, but also others like Catfish Hunter, Ed Figueroa, Dick Tidrow, and a man who drew some booze earlier in the season, reliever Goose Gossage. Against Seattle, with the potential tying in go-ahead runs in scoring position, the Goose struck out three in a row on 11 pitches. An awesome display of power pitching. Trying to remember the time in September. It's New York against Boston again. And Yankee fans will tell you the world champs are smoking. Now, for this week's Volkswagen quiz. In 1950, Cleveland's Al Rosen smashed 37 home runs in his rookie season. He not only led the league, but set an American League record for most home runs by a rookie. The National League record for homers in a rookie season is shared by two players. Can you name them? Stay tuned, for Volkswagen will ask you again.